Hello everyone, Leah here. So today I brought seven or eight different Korean Minho sunscreens to review and I know a lot of you guys have requested me to touch on and review and share my opinion on Korean sunscreens. So this is kind of like an extended version of the Minho sunscreen roundup video that I uploaded a couple of weeks back so I highly recommend you guys to watch that. And if you guys aren't subscribed to my channel yet, I really really would appreciate it if you guys do by hitting the subscribe and the bell button down below. Really Really appreciate your support and love so let's get moving I think I can share some useful tips with you guys when choosing the right Korean mineral sunscreen so first of all identify the manufacturer according to Korean FDA regulation Korean brands are required to label the manufacturing lab the exact manufacturer on the back of the packaging so you'll see the brand information but also the manufacturer this is actually pretty useful because a lot of times mineral sunscreens are fairly similar when it's made from the same lab. Huh? I think with chemical sunscreens, since it does have a variety of UV filters to play with, I don't feel like there's a lot of overlap between brands using the same manufacturer. However, when it comes to mineral sunscreens, since we do have only two UV filters, zinc oxide and titanium dioxide to play with. All the labs have their own like specialty, the base formulation that is the most popular. So it seems like a lot of brands use the same formulation uh -huh. So for instance, these three sunscreens are from three different brands, Dr. G, as is to be Cyanic. They are all made from Cos On. I'm not saying like 100% everything is going to be identical. Each brand is going to tweak a little bit from the formulation that is already there. But I feel like the sensorial and the application process and how it feels on the skin they feel so similar. These two sunscreens, Tuco for School and Holika Holika sunscreen, they are made from the same lab called Cos On as well. And they probably share 90% of the same ingredients and the texture and how it feels is very, very similar to one another. Look and compare the manufacturer, look and compare the ingredient list. I'm pretty sure you will find a specific pattern. But I'm not saying that 100% all of the mineral sunscreens in Korea are going to be identical. But in a lot of cases, I feel like it is possible. Second tip, if you are looking for a lighter weight texture that doesn't feel like it has any kind of film on top, look for a sunscreen that has cyclomethicone on top of the ingredient list. Cyclomethicone is more like a volatile compound that gets evaporated upon application, so you don't really feel that kind of weight at all. It's more suitable for oilier skin type, and it makes the entire formulation a little bit lighter feeling. If you are looking for a sunscreen that does protect your skin, that does moisturize, that kind of leaves a film or a barrier behind. Look for Dimethicone on top of the ingredient list. And if you're looking for that kind of water bursting sunscreen, which is kind of considered as watery sunscreen here in Korea, look for an ingredient called C1215 alkyl benzoate. So I hope that was helpful to you guys. The third tip is that if you do have really, really dry and really extremely dehydrated skin, I think you might be better off using American mineral sunscreens or European mineral sunscreens. I do feel like a lot of Korean mineral sunscreens, I mean at least with the ones that I have tried and I have tried a lot, they just dry the crap out of my skin, it just sucks away all the moisture and the hydration so it just leaves my skin feeling very very raw and very papery so when it comes to mineral sunscreen, Korean mineral sunscreens are not my favorite but I feel like Korean sunscreens do make a really pleasant formula that applies really smoothly. It has like pros and cons. So the first product is the As Is To Be Pure Mineral Sun Cream SPF 50 Plus. This is very similar to Dr. G Green Mild Up Sun and the one that I'll be showing you guys later from Cyanic. It does have that kind of creamy texture. However, it doesn't feel like a thick cream or a greasy cream at all. It in fact feels super duper hydrating upon application. It doesn't leave any grease behind. Cyclomethicone is a second top ingredient list, which explains a lot. Like it is a very lightweight formula that doesn't leave any film or anything behind. So I think that in turn made my skin a little bit drier, but it felt like a pretty gentle and pretty easy to use sunscreen. I would say it leaves 
very very minimal white cast but it's not something that's super obvious if you are reapplying this on top of your sunscreen i think this does layer pretty well like it smoothly blends into the skin next up we have cyanic so the enjoy safety sun cream feels a lot similar to dr g as is to be it does come in that kind of hydrating cream formula but the cyanic one definitely feels like it's more waterproof so i've been applying this um, all over my body when i'm kind of like running outdoors or doing more outdoor activities i think i would prefer this much more than other ones this also feels similar to the make prem blu-ray sun cream that is also from the same manufacturing lab it is very hard to wash it off so I do use a cleansing oil all over my body to actually dissolve the sunscreen. I wouldn't really apply this on my face because it's extremely drying. But other than that, I think it is a very affordable sunscreen that a lot of people can wear on their body. And they often do like buy one get one free promotion, which is always a plus. This is that cyclomethicum based one as well. And compared to the safety one, they have another sunscreen called Enjoy Safety Aqua Sun SPF 50 plus. This is the exact watery sunscreen that I was talking about before where it contains C1215 alkyl benzoate on the top of the ingredient. As soon as you apply it, it feels like a very slippery water bursting texture. A lot of people do seem to enjoy that kind of quality, especially in summertime. It does feel a little bit cooling. The only con for this one is that it only uses titanium dioxide as the UV filter. When it comes to UVA protection, zinc oxide is way more superior so I do love a good blend of zinc oxide and titanium dioxide for full protection against UVA and UVB. Again, it's not like a bad sunscreen at all so I don't know what to think about it. These two products do contain essential oils so if that's something that bothers you, definitely stay away from it. Alright, so we have the lotion type mineral sunscreens here. This is Holika Holika Mild Sun Lotion and and the big bottle is from Too Cool for School. It's called Mild Sika Sun Lotion. Both are manufactured from the same lab. 90% of the ingredient list is also identical. So I feel like they just made like one or two tweaks in terms of formulation, but I feel like the base is pretty much the same. Both are actually a little bit more moisturizing than the cream types that I just showed you guys. But Too Cool for Too Cool. Too, too cool. For school. Too Cool For School has a slightly, slightly, slightly more moisturizing property than the Holika Holika Sun Lotion. So I feel like this would suit more towards like fall and springtime. It pretty much slides against your skin. It's very fun to apply because it just like melts and glides over the skin. It does take a little bit more time to kind of pat everything in. Both leave your skin in a very natural finish. It's not overly matte or drying, but also it's not like dewy at all. I think it does have a good balance, so if you do have normal skin, these might work really well for you guys. I have seen reviews that the Holika Holika one seems to crease in the fine lines around your nostrils or where you have a little bit more dry patches. It seems to kind of accentuate the look of it. Do exfoliate before, I guess, when using these two. Next, we have another new brand to me, Labno Sikaloe Sikaloe. Sikaloi <laughs> Relief Sun Milk SPF 50 Plus. I got this after watching Director Pai's manual sunscreen video, and you guys should definitely check her out. She is amazing. This does come in that kind of milky formula, and compared to the lotion type that I just showed you guys, the Lab Nose Down Milk is a little bit greasier. It does kind of leave you an unwanted grease, I guess, for oily or normal combo skin. But if you do appreciate that dew and the shine, I think this will definitely work best for you. This is also supposed to cool and calm down your skin as well with metacosticides and asiatica extract and also aloe vera extract. Now the application of this is pretty remarkable. It does feel a lot more smoother, like silkier almost. I think I would really really enjoy this using in probably winter time because it just glides onto your skin like like a makeup primer. Because I kind of suspected that like the silkiness is coming from high content of silicone oils, but it barely used 
any silicon oils. It does have like one, I think, in the middle or bottom of the ingredient list. And the rest of it is just like esters and other ingredients. So I think this is pretty well formulated. There is a slight white cast with this product. So if you do have darker skin tone, this might not be the best option. I probably would have given this 5 out of 5 if it doesn't have essential oils. This is also a titanium dioxide only sunscreen, by the way. So if you are looking for a zinc based sunscreen, this is probably a pass for you. So the next two sunscreens are designed for sensitive skin type. They are all essential oils free and fragrance free. The first one is Etude House Mild Defense Sun Cream, SPF 49, PA triple, no actually double plus. Oh. Okay, PA2 pluses is actually rare to find these days. Uh, yeah, I didn't know that. So it has dimethicone in the second ingredient list. So that also means that it will kind of leave a film on top, leaving your skin more protected and more mo moisturized. I think the biggest con for me is that it has a very obvious white cast. Also, just looking at the ingredient, list it says it contains nano zinc oxide nano titanium dioxide so i'm not really sure where that white cast is coming from the next product for sensitive skin is dermatory something hypoallergenic sun fluid so dermatory is a brand that i've been quite interested lately because their entire philosophy is designed towards hypoallergenic for sensitive skin types so they've got rid of potential allergens they got rid of all the fragrances and essential oils and they try to aim to shorten and simplify the ingredient list and they try not to use too many natural ingredients Dermatory is actually a brand from Clio their skincare products seem to be pretty decent I was looking for a mineral sunscreen that doesn't contain any fragrance and essential oils the consistency is very very milky and fluid as soon as you apply it you will feel a little bit of grease initially like it feels like it's not 100% Water. like there's some oily content inside floating on top of my skin and sometimes it feels like it is a little bit too much in summertime but it dries down to a pretty matte finish I love how it's so gentle on the skin it doesn't break me out it doesn't really aggravate my skin sensitivity but it is really 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 white casties if it doesn't have a white cast I think I will give this 5 out of 5 I'll probably use this when my skin is extremely sensitive and needs that kind of TLC. So that was it. I think Korean mineral sunscreens pretty much nailed it with the application, sensorial, and also the texture and everything. But I still prefer Clinique and Paula's Choice Murad sunscreen. They just feel more comfortable on the skin. Like it doesn't dry my skin out. That's my problem, but it might not be yours. So definitely let me know and share your experience with any of the sunscreens that you have tried. Stay happy and healthy, eat a lot of veggies, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye!